This watch is extremely unique. Why? Well, aside from the design, take a look here at the six o'clock position. Hang on, let me see if I can get this in focus. Okay. Um, for those of you that cannot see, at the 6 o'clock position, it says Talking Solar Run Radio Controlled. This is the only solar-powered talking radio controlled watch. Not only that, it's the only solar-powered talking watch, period. This watch is not available in the United States through any of the direct, direct uh, channels, RNIB, or our, um, LSNS, Maxi Aids, etc. In fact, my slip-up of RNIB probably gave something away, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn to the back. This watch was produced by LifeMax with the assistance of the Royal National Institute of the Blind in London. The watch is a little bit different also in that, um, like I said, it is solar powered. If I push the top right button, the time is a second time, time so it got a signal. Now, if I push the lower right button, now if I push it twice, Today. you probably notice the second hand stopped at the 8 o'clock position. Now what does that mean? Well, at 8 o'clock you can probably make out a little letter H, at the 7 o'clock a little letter M, at 6 an L. That is your power reserve. Once the watch is on um, high, as it is now, so I'll show that to you again. Once the watch is on high, which audibly, they say in the manual that there's no audible indication for signal reception, yeah, signal reception, for um, battery level. Yes, there is, and that is, you probably heard those three beeps. When I first got the watch, the second hand was sitting between the six and seven o'clock position. It was just below medium, and I heard two beeps. Or was it one beep? I can't remember. But when it did get up to medium, I did hear two beeps. And then last night, around 6.30 local time, I was standing outside under the, um, out in, out in the sun, just to let it uh, get a bit of a power boost. And when I checked the level, I heard the three beeps. So, from what I could tell, three beeps are high, two beeps are, me are medium. And if you hear one beep after before any announcement, so for instance... If you hear a beep before the watch announces the time, then that means the battery level is low. At which point you have to stick it in a window or go outside, stick it outside on a, on a sunny day, and leave it for a little bit to get a charge. When I got the watch, like I said, it was between medium and low. Full charge took about a day and a half. And that was with a mixture of outdoor conditions and... Um, being directly outside, having it sit in a window, and having it exposed to a bathroom light during the night. What I would do is I sat it on a towel in my restroom and left the light on all night so it could get a little bit of a trickle charge. But if you want a really good charge, the best thing to do is to go outside. However, once the battery is fully charged, it will run for up to six months. So once it's fully charged, as long as there's daily exposure to light, that six-month power reserve is assuming no further light exposure. If this is continually exposed to light every single day, 
like like I intend to do with this, then it won't be a problem. You'll be able to have an infinite uh, power supply until the battery, and yes, this does have a battery. It's primarily a backup battery. The primary power source is light, but the backup battery is used to power the watch in darkness or at night. Um, anyway, that battery is good for supposedly 10 years. At least that's what I heard on my G-Shock, because my G-Shock is also solar-powered. Um, another interesting design element with this watch. It's a typical four-button layout, but the 10 o'clock and 8 o'clock buttons are recessed. This is to avoid any accidental operation. Um, once you get into the menus, though, if you own a Ryzen talking atomic watch... It's the exact same layout. You First of all, you've got your your alarm setting, turning on and off your alarm, turning on and off your hourly chime, uh, your global signal reception, which on an on-time talking watch is your time zone setting. Then you've got your setting, your, your ability to set the time manually. And then, after that, is your second-hand alignment. Now, believe it or not, the second-hand alignment, in my previous video, I showed you how to completely reset the hands. That's assuming all three hands are completely off. When I received this watch, the second hand was set so that, the, that when it pointed at the 58 seconds mark, um, which, which is like two little notches before the 12, that's when the internal time would would basically say zero seconds. And second-hand alignment fixed that right up. All I had to do was point the second hand to six, and there was no problem. So if your, se if your hour and minute hands are pointing at the correct time, uh, generally speaking, but your second hand is a little bit off, then second-hand alignment will work. Otherwise, you're going to have to go through a full reset. Now, I also mentioned in a previous video that when it came to that full reset, that I had to look in the, in the manual for this watch for this LifeMax Talking Atomic Solar Watch to get those instructions because they are not necessarily presented in anything we get here in the States. Um, what else do I like about this? Well, the nice, big, black hands. They are very easy to see from a, glance, from a distance for me. Also, the band. You probably notice that this has a stretch band. It's a little bit smaller than um, than what you might expect out of the box, and that's because in order to get it to fit, we had to remove five links. So hang on a moment. Let me set the phone down so I can put this on, and I'll show you what it looks like on the wrist. So there it is on the wrist. This actually wears extremely comfortably. It's a nice tight fit. It doesn't roll around at all. And this is this is the very first watch that I've ever had with one of these stretch metal bands. And I don't see myself ever going back to leather or the clasp bands at all. It was extremely easy for them to remove the links. And once I got it on, you know, it wasn't a problem whatsoever. Um... Oh, one last thing. I, can, I think I forgot. If you push the 10 o'clock button while you're in timekeeping mode, so this little recessed one up here, you push that, and the watch will announce the alarm time. Again, if you have a four-button Ryzen talking atomic watch, it's pretty much the exact same thing. The only difference between this one and a lot of the ones here in the United States is these two right-hand buttons serve as double duty like I showed you in the beginning of the video. You utilize the top right button for time announcement and signal reception, and on the on the lower right button for date announcement and battery level. The lower left button does not do anything if just pushed. You have to push and hold it to enter the menu system. On a lot of other four-button watches available here in the States directly, you push that and it gives you the signal reception. That's not the case with this one. But other than those small differences... And obviously the voice. The voice was actually recorded by, like I said earlier, by the Royal National Institute of the Blind, so it's not some computerized voice. Um, 
This watch does work in the US, UK, Germany, and Japan. Again, if you have a Ryzen, it's pretty much the exact same thing. The main draw for me on this one was the fact that it is solar powered, thus environmentally friendly. I'll never have to worry about replacing a battery, at least not in the immediate future within the next two to three years. The battery in this should last a very long time. A little bit of a note, by the way, about this watch for anybody who's interested. Again, not available in the United States. However, if you go to Amazon US, Amazon.com, and search for Solar Talking Watch, this watch is still available because as soon as I got this, within five days, it was completely sold out. Seriously, there were only five left, so I jumped on it, got it, and within five days after I ordered it, they were completely gone. At least this one was. However, there is one available still, and the last time I checked, I think it was last night, there were about 20 of them left, and this is in August 2000, uh, September 2014 when I'm recording this. So, obviously, things may have changed. But, um, it's still available with the leather band, if you don't mind having a leather band, but if you want it, and you're not in the UK, get it. I'm serious, because if you do not, um, I'm not exactly sure when this will be back. Um, oh, and in case you're wondering, I did mention the Royal National Institute of the Blind. If you're not a British citizen, you cannot join the RNIB and therefore order this watch. So you have to be anybody outside of Great Britain, I'm sorry, you're out of luck. So you're really, your best bet is Amazon, or possibly eBay. Anyway, what do you guys think? I would say that of all my Talking Atomic watches, this and my Talking Atomic pocket watch have tied for number one. Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome, and have a nice day.